Be of good cheer, though the world is shaking. Be of good cheer, whenever forsaken. Troubles will come, God's word told us so. A child of God, one thing we all know. Our Lord said, have no fear, be of good cheer. 275 in your songbook, it is well with my soul. 275, and think about these words. Let it minister to your heart this evening. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea God to bless the service. I want to thank God for people who prayed this morning. We mentioned our deaf are having their harvest weekend, and Brother John Barr is in preaching to our deaf, and they had a great activity last night. There was 122 people there, which is amazing, and we had our deaf service this morning, and I mentioned that last evening there was a lady who was uh, attending the service named Diana, deaf lady, 
and she heard the gospel and then came back this morning. She and her husband and both of those got saved today, which is phenomenal. You can clap for that. Praise the Lord. And very, very exciting. And I went over at the lunchtime hour, and the deaf were having a lunch in. They're having their, normally they're in here with us on Sunday night, but they're having their service tonight. And so we'll pray for them. And I appreciate Brother Chris Harris and Diana and all of those in our church who signed to our deaf and all of what God's doing. We have different locations, but we're one church. We have our deaf congregation, our Spanish congregation in the morning. We, we have young people all over the place, and uh, yet we come here in this evening, and, and I just want to say that we're one church, and we thank God for the privilege of it. So let's pray. Ask God to bless Brother Mike and the family. They're singing over at Ben Salem Baptist Church tonight, and pray for them that God would bless them. And Pastor Joe White there. Father, I pray that you would help Brother Mike and the crew as they sing, and I pray you put an anointing. Lord, if he's preaching, I pray you'd fill him with the Holy Ghost, and I pray you touch all of that music. Lord, I pray that you'd help Brother John Barr as he's preaching to the deaf this evening. I pray you bless him. I pray you bless his dear wife. And I pray that you give a revival spirit amongst our deaf congregation. I pray for Brother Danny preaching to the Spanish congregation. I pray you give a spirit of revival there. Bless the young children's class. I pray that you be with the ladies who teach that. Bless the nursery. Pray you put a hedge of protection about this place. Father, I pray if there's anyone here tonight not saved or watching online not saved, I pray that they would make that decision to come to Christ. And God, I pray that you'd move in the service. Lord, I pray you would inhabit our praise. I pray that we would sense your presence. I pray that you get the glory and the honor from all that's said and done. Please be with other churches in our country and around the world having Sunday night church. Lord, I pray that you do great things in all the churches and I pray for a great revival. And we love you and we praise you. We pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. I failed to mention there was a lady who walked. You can be seated. I'm sorry. Uh, there was a lady who walked the aisle this morning for salvation here in the auditorium. And I thank God for that. It's always great when people get saved. Uh, Mike Minch, he just said amen when I said that. He preached in Port Elizabeth this morning, and someone raised their hand, and someone went to that person afterwards and led that person to the Lord. So thank God. Listen, in heaven, every single time someone gets saved, it makes news in heaven. All right? When someone gets saved, it makes news in heaven, and there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repenteth. God knows every single person that comes to Christ, and I thank God for all those who did. Let's listen now to the choir.
Amen. Praise the Lord for the cross and all that it means to us. Let's stand. 484 in your songbook. Don't ever get over what the Lord's done for you. Don't ever get over it. Brother Jason will come and lead this song. 484, a child of the king. Lift your voice, sing it out, and be happy about it. Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched. you got saved. Tell somebody when you got saved. If you're not saved, tell them I need to be saved. Somebody will help you. Take a moment, share your testimony, shake hands with somebody, meet somebody, greet somebody. Be friendly in church tonight. second verse now I'm a child now I'm a child with the heavenly home my holy father has made me his own and I'm cleansed by his blood hold in his love and so seed it and thank God that we're saved we know the Lord we're going to pray for our offering if you'd like to get before we do that if you're our guest tonight uh, we'd love to give you what we call a response card and have you fill that out and then as you leave tonight there'll be ushers at the back you can just hand it off to one of the ushers and we really would appreciate you letting us know if you're our guest tonight won't make you stand to give a speech but if you're here tonight for the first time or here just once in a while. Would you raise your hand just high enough where the men could find you? They'll come through very, very quickly and give you one of these cards. Again, if you just fill it out and then hand it off to an usher as you leave, we would greatly appreciate that. And thanks for being in church tonight. Not sure how you heard about us, but we are glad that you're here. We're going to pray for our offering. If you'd like to give, you can give online or you can give it to an usher as you leave this evening or you can mail it into the church or bring it by. And let's pray for the offering that God would bless it. I'd ask everybody in our church, just pray on a regular basis that God would help us financially, bless our people financially, and then also that God would send in miracle money. There's projects that we need to work on. There's buildings we need to build that if we had the money for all of it, I'd start it now. So let's be praying, and God is able. Father, I pray you bless the offering, and I pray that you would use the money for your honor and for your glory I pray it would be for the furtherance of the gospel, and I pray it would be for the care of this local church. And God, I pray you bless all of our people who are faithful, who are faithful in giving their tithes and offerings and faith promise. I pray you bless all of our missionaries. I pray you'd meet their needs and that you'd take care of them. I do pray for the Northeast. I pray that we'd be able to see more churches started and more churches strengthened. And God, I pray that you would take care of our church family. And we love you and praise you. We pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. Before this song, I'm going to read, for you, read to you from Zechariah chapter 9. And in Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9, 
The Bible says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. So we know this is prophecy about the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this was fulfilled when the Lord came through the eastern gate there in Jerusalem. And the Bible says, And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. He shall speak peace unto the heathen. Now, it doesn't say there church or Gentile, but as part of the prophecy of that verse that there would be a chance for those of us who are non-Jewish, and thank God, and we're preaching a lot about Paul here lately, and so it says he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. And the young people are going to sing here and use that term, prisoner of hope. And it's here in the Word of God. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope, and including both the Jewish people and us heathen here, that we thank God. Paul talked about being a prisoner of Christ. And a prisoner of hope is the idea if we latched on to it, we don't want to let go of it. We love where it's at. And that we have a hope, that we have a confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil has all of its offers. The world has all of its offers. But thank God we belong to the king. And we have a hope that lasts for eternity. Thank God for that. You think about people in a human prison, a physical prison. They have even the hope, the idea of ultimately escaping through death. But us being prisoners of hope and for all of eternity, we will be having our hope in Christ. And we're tied to Christ. We're anchored to Christ. And thank God for it. They don't understand, but I know what's true in my heart. Now I can't control what's out of my hands, but I can lay back in your arms. I'm a prisoner of hope, bound by my faith, chained to your love, locked up in grace. I'm free to leave, but I'll never go. Let's stand one more time. Number 529 in your songbook, How Firm a Foundation 
I'm thankful for God and the Word of God, a firm foundation. Let's sing on that first verse. We'll sing all four verses. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent Word. can be seated. We're going to take just a moment and pray. I saw Rob in the back, Rob Maciosi, and I was thinking about that song. It talked about some of the trials and different things that we go through, and uh, Melanie Goodspeed has been out of church here for a while because of dealing with her cancer, and there are others in our church that are dealing with it, and I want to take just a moment and pray for them and that God would give them grace. Please pray along with me. Father, I pray for those in our church that are fighting cancer. And, Lord, I know it's a battle every day, and it doesn't shut off. And, Lord, they need your grace. And I pray that you give them grace, and I pray that you give them healing. And I pray that you be with their families and those who are helping and assisting with all that goes on. And I pray you bless uh, family members, bless children. And, God, I pray that you would work in their lives. I pray for others going through other deep waters of different types, that you be with them and give them grace And in this moment. And we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll never know why the righteous suffer when for Christ they choose to stand. And I'll never know why the godless prosper and are blessed in the eyes of men. And though there are answers that I've never heard, my faith is in Jesus, I stand on his word. to know is that God loves me. All I need to know is His eyes are on me. All I need to know is His 
mighty hand is guiding each step I take. That's all I need to know. I'll never know why hearts are broken, why at times the teardrops fall. And I'll never know why prayers aren't answered when to God we humbly call. And though we are tested and don't understand, my faith is in Jesus, I'll hold to his hand. All I need to know is that God loves me. All I need to know is his eyes are on me. All I need to know is his mighty hand is God. Praise the Lord. That's an encouraging, encouraging song. Grab your Bible, and I appreciate everybody being here tonight. We want to listen to the Word of God. It's a privilege every time that we hear it preached, and we need to open up our ears, open up our heart, and let's listen tonight. All right, good. Good to be in church. Turn with me in the Word of God to the book of Acts, chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. And uh, this Tuesday, I'm supposed to get my second cataract surgery. When I got the first one, I was all blurry in that eye for about four days. So if I'm blurry in this eye and I still can't see out this eye, I'm going to be in bad shape. So pray for me that I get by okay. Acts 2 chapter, Acts 2 chapter, Acts chapter 2 and uh, verse 41, we're going to start there. I'm preaching tonight, my message, the title of my message is A Spiritual Church. A Spiritual Church. What makes a church spiritual? What is a spiritual church? There's a lot of churches. And uh, unfortunately, sadly to say, they're not all spiritual churches. Obviously, if a church doesn't preach the gospel, it's not a spiritual church. If it doesn't have its the word of God for the for the centerpiece, it's not a spiritual church. And this is not exhaustive. This is not everything uh, that you would find a spiritual church, but it's some things that I was thinking about. And uh, we want to have, I hope you can say this, we want to have a spiritual church. Uh, our church, we're celebrating our anniversary next week, 43 years. And it's hard for me to believe it's going by already that fast. That's a lifetime. But in Acts chapter 2, We have what we would call the early church, and it's actually a a very primitive church. It's it's in a very primitive stage, in just an infant stage, but I I believe it is a a spiritual church. The church of Corinth is a carnal church. It's it's a Bible church. It saved people, but it's a carnal church. And then we have the church at Philippi, and I believe that's a spiritual church, and the church at Antioch is a spiritual church. So there's different kinds of churches. I bet I have been in a lot of churches. I preached in five churches in the last three or four weeks. And uh, not every church is a spiritual church, unfortunately. So verse 41, 
Then that they then they gladly then they that gladly received his word were baptized. The same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. You talk about revival. This church is born in revival, and they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. So they stuck with it. You didn't have to go try to figure out where they were or call them on the phone, try and get them out. And uh, they were a praying church. Fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They were a generous church. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. So in this 2024, we have a hard time getting people to come back on Sunday night. I'm thankful you're here. Here's a church, had church every day. And every night they had church. And praising God and having favor with all the people. It was a, wasn't a dead church for sure. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So people are getting saved and the church is growing. And it's a spiritual church. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to preach about it a little bit. And uh, let's pray the Lord first. Father, I pray for your help tonight. Lord, we need you. We need the spirit of God in this place. And Lord, we want to be, we strive to be uh, a spiritual church. And uh, Lord, I pray you'd bless this message tonight. And I pray God that it would challenge us and encourage us to be that. And we love you, God. I thank you for how good you've been to us and how good you are all the time. And uh, we just praise you and worship you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's look at some things here. Second Timothy chapter number three and verse 16. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All the word of God is inspired. None of it is less inspired. None of it is more inspired. It's all inspired. It's God breathed. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Doesn't mean without any faults, but it means to be complete, to be mature, but not a novice, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So the first thing I believe in a spiritual church, you have to have a spiritual pastor. I'm not trying to toot my own horn tonight, but the man of God, the, the church isn't going to be any more spiritual than the pastor is. The pastor sets the temperature in the church. And I have been the pastor for 43 years. Brother Charlie's been associate here for 35 years. Brother Mike's been here over 25 years. But I would just point out that he is the pastor of the future. I'm not going to be around here forever. And some people don't want to think about that, but you got to deal with that. And we had to plan and we've been planning for a long time. So God, listen, God calls a man and God blesses a man. I'm not toot my own horn here, but I'm just telling you what I know, what's been proven to me and what God has shown me. God does not bless a town. God does not bless a place. God does not bless a church. He blesses a man. And that man, God uses him and blesses the people through him. Look at me, look at me, don't look at me. Look with me. First John chapter two. I've got my one glass in and my one glass out. I don't know how many people notice that, but it makes you feel a little weird when people are kind of looking at you funny. And they think, you know, this guy's got dementia or something. He's got only one glass. I don't have glasses, I have a glass. First John chapter two and verse number 20. The Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. That's a, that's a special touch for a special task. That's a supernatural power for a, 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 superna a supernatural, uh, what is it, supernatural source. So it's the unction, it's the touch of God, it's having God on you. Look at verse 27, the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. So we need God's touch. We need God's power. We need unction. And it's important for the man of God to be the man of God. Not just say that, but to be that. 
Lee Robertson, uh, down in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Tennessee Temple Schools, he had the largest church in America for years. And if you go down there now, the church doesn't exist. Last couple years, the church burnt down. It was pretty much just empty. Homeless people were living in it. But Lee Robertson's gone, and that ministry is gone. Tom Malone was up in uh, Pontiac, Mission, Mich Michigan, the man from Pontiac. He had a great ministry up there, Emanuel Baptist Church, Midwestern Baptist College. Brother Fish, who's with us, hopefully, Brother Fish, you're listening tonight. He went to that school. A lot, it turned out a lot of preachers came out here in the Northeast and started churches. Pastor Gardner, my pastor, uh, came from that school, and my wife and I got saved under his ministry. That college does not exist, and the church does not exist. What are you saying? I'm saying Tom Malone's gone, and the ministry's gone. Brother Roloff's, where I had the privilege to minister and be part of that ministry down in Corpus Christi, Texas, when we were down there, there was uh, 800 people on the farm. Just if nobody came to church, we had 800. It had a great ministry going on down there. If you go down there now, the buildings are just rotting away. Brother Roloff's gone, and the ministry's gone. Dallas Billington, I could go on and on with these. Dallas Billington, he had uh, for a while his church, the biggest church in America, Akron Baptist Temple. Some of you young men are from out in that area, and I understand they just demolished the buildings that were just sitting there empty. So Dallas is gone and the buildings are gone. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you're going to have a spiritual church, you got to have a spiritual pastor. You have to have a man of God in the pulpit. And, and God blesses, God puts his hand on and God touches that man. Look with me in Galatians. And I hope you don't take this as bragging because I am happen to be the pastor right now. I uh, preached today over in Rob's church and uh, I'm thankful seeing what God's doing with Anna and Rob. And one of the men come up afterwards and said to me, you still got it. And that was an encouragement to me because I don't want to lose God's touch. I don't want to lose God's power. You remember Samson, Bible talks about Samson being filled with God more than anybody else in the Bible. And then the Bible says when he got messed up with Deliah, he went out like he did before and he wist not that the spirit had departed from it. He lost that power, he lost that unction, he lost that touch. Look at Galatians chapter six with me. Verse number one, I hope you turn to it. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, just run him down, throw him under the bus, beat him up. That's what we do in Baptist churches. Talk about him, call everybody on the phone, let them know. No, it doesn't say that. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Let me ask you a question. We talk, it's like I'm blowing my own horn. I'm uh, bragging on myself to be, you know, the pastor needs to be spiritual, but you need to be spiritual. This church isn't going to be any more spiritual than the people in the church because the people are the church. Look what it says. You that are spiritual, ye which are spiritual, are you spiritual? Are you a spiritual person? Let me say this, doing doesn't make a person spiritual. Don't think because we do this, 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 check, 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 we're spiritual. The spirit of God makes a person spiritual. Your relationship with God, how close you are to God is what makes you spiritual. Now, if you're close with God, you'll be a spiritual person you're going, to, you're going to have a spiritual life and you're going to do spiritual things. But it's not the things that make you spiritual. It's that relationship that you have with God. Look over in Ephesians chapter number three. And uh, Paul gives a list here of things he wants you to be. And look at verse 19. He said, I want you to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That verse has meant a lot to me. It's just kind of, it's always been there, but it jumped out for me about a year ago to be filled with all the fullness of God. If you're going to be a spiritual person, you're going to be a spirit-filled person. If you're not a spirit-filled person, you can't be spiritual. You have to be filled with the spirit of God. And if you're going to be filled with the spirit of God, you've got to be empty 
to self. Look with me over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Now, the Corinthian church is started by Paul. Paul, I believe, is the greatest Christian in the Bible. I mean, no doubt about it. And he's a missionary. He starts all these churches. And the, the church at Corinth is a, a Bible church. It's a church where the gospel would be preached. People would hear the gospel. People would get saved. People would be baptized. But listen, they still were not a spiritual church. I'm saying to you that a church can be a Bible church and not be a spiritual church. It could be a place where people are getting saved and still not be a spiritual church. So look at 1 Corinthians 3 with me. Paul says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. Hey, I wanted to treat you like spiritual people. I'm going to talk to you and, and, and as you're spiritual, but you're not. You're carnal. You say, what's that word carnal mean? It means fleshly. It means worldly. You're either you're, you're one or the other. You're either spiritual or you're carnal. And, and let me just say this. Everybody in a church doesn't have to be spiritual to make a church spiritual. I don't know the number. There has to be a, a fair amount of spiritual people, but you're never going to have everybody in church going to be spiritual. There's, there's tares in with the wheat. L look around this room, Sunday night, Silent Rock Baptist Church. There's lost people in this room. There's carnal Christians in this room. Not everybody's spiritual. But you, I hope, are spiritual. And you want to be spiritual. And it's God that makes you spiritual. Amen. He said, I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. I couldn't preach the word of God to you. I had to give you all the easy stuff, give you all the milk, because you can't stand the sound doctrine. You can't take it. He says, for you are yet carnal, for where is there's among you envying and strife and divisions? Are you not carnal and walk as men? Now, what made this church a carnal church? One of the things was it was a divided church. It was a divided church. On the day of Pentecost, they said that the Bible says they were in one accord in one place, and they all had the same mind. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Be agreed. We need to be of one mind. We need to be of one spirit. It, it, you can't have a spiritual church if it's a divided church. Look what he says here. He said, one saith, I'm a Paul, another I'm a Paulus. Are you not carnal? Who's Paul? Who's a Paulus? But ministers by whom you believe, even the Lord gave to every man. I have planted a Paulus water. God gave the increase. You know what he's saying? I'm nobody. Paulus is nobody. And, and you're stupid for following men. You're not supposed to follow men. You're supposed to follow God. We're not supposed to have gurus. We don't have a guru. We have a God. We have the Lord Jesus Christ and we, we follow the word of God. So we don't want to be a divided church. Let me say this over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Turn over there with me. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. A spiritual church is a preaching church. Paul said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. That means preach the word when people like it and it's popular and preach the word when people don't like it and it's not popular. He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Hey, let me just tell you something. He said the time will come. Guess what? The time has come. We're already there. And I've mentioned this so many times. We, we go, I, I go in churches and I don't preach at them, of course, but I've been in churches, the church buildings. There's no pulpit. You say, why is that? Because today preaching is out of season. People want to have a little stool, have their little golf shirt, get up there and devotionalize everybody's heart and just say all nice things and watered down things and smooth things. And nobody wants to reprove and rebuke. But the Bible says, listen, we're supposed to preach the whole counsel of God. You can't, you can't have a, a, a wimpy church and have a spiritual church. The only reason you have a wimpy church is because you've got a wimpy pastor who's trying to please the people 
He's not as worried about pleasing God as he is pleasing people. So that's, that's a big thing today. Watered down preaching. Uh, let me just say this. The church is not supposed to be built on entertainment. I, I enjoy the special music. I enjoy the choir. And uh, it's supposed to be a, a put people in a mood for worship. And it's part of our worship. But the main thing, this pulpit's in the middle of this aisle because the preaching word of God is supposed to be the main thing in a church. We started this church 43 years ago and we started it with preaching and we're still preaching. Over in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13, Jesus said, it is written, my house has been called a house of prayer and you've made it a den of thieves. A house of prayer. How many churches are praying churches? I don't think we pray near enough. We have prayer meeting. We don't have midway service. We have a men's prayer meeting. We've been having that for 43 years every Saturday night. But you listen, you can't pray too much. You can't pray too much. We need a spiritual church is a praying church with praying people. And, and I appreciate, you know, a public prayer and praying with people. But most of your real serious praying is going to be just you and God. In your prayer closet, alone with God. But I hope, listen, I hope you are a prayer warrior. I don't know the prayer warriors in this church. I don't know who spends five minutes in prayer and who spends five hours in prayer. But we're never going to have a spiritual work and never have a spiritual church with God working the way we want him to work if we're not a praying church. We were uh, down, I mentioned we were down at Corpus Christi and uh, we would have church on Thursday night. That's why we have prayer meeting on Thursday night because I got used to it. Brother Roloff would go out on Sunday night or Monday morning and go to different churches, raising money, come back in Thursday. Then we'd have uh, Saturday night church. And it wasn't, you know, come Saturday night so you don't have to come Sunday. But we had a Saturday night church. And then after Saturday night, we had an all-night prayer meeting. You say, how often did you have it? Every week. Just an all-night prayer meeting. Now, everybody didn't stay all night, but the different homes came in at different times. And there was somebody praying all night long. And then we had Sunday school. And then we had church Sunday morning. And then we had two services Sunday night. And then we had chapel every day. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about church. And I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about prayer. Great churches have great prayers. Let me say this. You need to have, if you want to have a spiritual church, and this is big. Look in Colossians. And, and this is one of my, I would say my gripes. I probably shouldn't use that word. But this is one of my gripes. If you're going to have a proper church, if you're going to have a spiritual church, you've got to have proper music. If you're going to have a spiritual church, you have to have spiritual music. You can't have carnal music and have a spiritual church. Carnal people desire carnal music. Spiritual people ought to have a desire for spiritual music. I'm not interested in pleasing people. I'm interested in pleasing God. Well, people like that contemporary music. That's because they're carnal. If a person's spiritual, they're going to want, they're going to have a desire for spirit, they're going to have an appetite for spiritual music. If you don't like spiritual music, it's because you're carnal. Amen. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. What kind of songs should we have in church? What kind of music should we have in church? Spiritual music. Spiritual music. We're not having a rock band. We're not having a rock concert. We're not up here jiggling and wiggling and jumping around and moaning and groaning. People ought to know the difference between spiritual and carnal. People ought to know the difference between spiritual and sensual. We're not here singing to our girlfriend. We're here praising God and worshiping God. The people that speak the most about worship, generally speaking, know the least about it. And don't practice it. A lot of people wouldn't know worship if they fell over it. Just because you have a sign that says worship center doesn't mean it's worship. A lot of it's just a lot of junk. And some of you don't like it, and that's all right. There's a lot of churches around. 1 John chapter 4, look over there. Singing with grace in your hearts, psalms, hymns, spiritual music. Look at, uh, what did I say? 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. You say, what's that mean? It means test the spirits. 
What kind of spirit is it? What kind of music are they singing? What kind of church is this? What do they look like? How do they dress? How do they talk? What are they singing about? You know, listen, let me just say this, and some of you aren't having a good time, but that's okay. When you got all this contemporary junk and all this carnal music, you got a lot of carnal people. You can, you can look in that sort of a group and you will see a difference in the way those people dress and the way they act and the way they behave themselves. I'm just telling you, the whole thing's different. It's just, it's not the same spirit. I get in church like that, it doesn't bless my spirit, it grieves my spirit. And you say, well, you're an old fogey. I know I am, but that's got nothing to do with it. Look at 1 Timothy, 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are God. Is this of God? Is Johnny Boy over there in the plastic cage beating on the drums, is that of God? Is it of God? Is that, is it of God? I don't believe it is. That's, I'll give you my opinion. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We have a lot of people have, especially young people, have gone to different places and uh, a lot of the attractions of music. And uh, it feeds the flesh. That's why they like it, because they're fleshly. First Corinthians, chapter number two, turn with me. I'll just pick it up in verse 11. What man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but by the spirit of God. So if, we, if we're going to understand spiritual things, we're going to have spiritual discernment, we've got to have the spirit of God. Now, when you get saved, you get permanently indwelt with the spirit of God. But there's a difference between being indwelt with the Spirit of God and being filled with the Spirit of God. People that have the Spirit can still be carnal. Because you have the Spirit, you're not immune to carnality. So look what it says. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. How many spirits are that? That's two spirits. There's a Spirit of the world and there's a Spirit of God. In the church, we should have the Spirit of God not the spirit of the world. You've heard me say this before. I look for the world. I look for the church. It was in the world. I look for the world and it was in the church. We don't want to have carnality in our church. We don't want to have, let me just say this. If you're going to sing in the choir, you're going to look like something. You're not going to, you're not going to be up here embarrassing me because you don't know how to dress. Amen. I'm talking about, you know, just common sense stuff. I mean, this is supposed to be the house of God. We're supposed to come here to worship God. People today do not know how to act in the house of God. People don't know how to dress. They don't know how to talk. It's just amazing. It's like we're on a mission field and you got to start with Adam and Eve. But that's just the way it is. Somebody was in here last week, I think it was, 20 years old, never been in a church building for her. Not even for a wedding, not even for a funeral. We're, we're growing up. Listen, mission fields come to America, so, but so is heathenism. We got, we, we, we're becoming a heathen nation, a godless nation. And people don't know what church is supposed to be like. And we're not helping them the way we should be helping them. Look, look what it says here. We've not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the word which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Listen, the Holy Spirit ought to teach you something. Amen. God ought to be showing you some things. When my wife and I got saved, we were talking here when, when Brother Charlie said, tell people how you got saved. When we got saved, man, I mean, our life changed. Amen. Just everything became new. I mean, we, so many things went out the window and so many things came into our life. You say, what was that? That was God showing us stuff. God showed us what was wrong. God showed us what we needed. And it was the Holy Spirit leading us. I'm saying this, if you're in a church, it, it, the Holy Spirit's leading and it's a spiritual church, it would be leading you into the right direction to be a spiritual person, to exalt the Lord and Christ have the preeminence and be the right kind of church. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness unto him, neither he can know them because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. What, is, what does that word discern mean? It means to know a difference. It means you'd be able to tell right from wrong. You ought to be able to, hey, listen, every person 
especially saved people, want to know right from wrong. And, and you ought to be able to tell carnal from spiritual and spiritual from worldly and sensual from spiritual. We're supposed to have spiritual discernment. You say, well, how, how do we get that? We get it from God. It's the Holy Spirit that shows that. When we're filled with the Spirit and we're led to the Spirit, He's going to lead us into spiritual things. We're going to have a spiritual life. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm almost done, so stay with me. Hebrews chapter 5. The only difference between me and Brother Chawi is when I say that, I mean it. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. I've heard him say seven more minutes. Half an hour later, I'm still sitting there thinking, <laughs> man, my, my watch must stop. Hebrews chapter 5. Um, Look at verse 11. we we'll just start there. In Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is rebuking these people. He says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you're a dull of hearing. That's not a compliment. Dull of hearing. I mean, you're hearing the word of God, but it's just going over your head. You're not living it. You're not putting it into practice. You're a hearer, but not a doer. For when through the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles, oracles of God. You're supposed to be teaching people. You're supposed to be discipling people. You're supposed to be growing, but, but you're a baby in Christ. You're, just, you're, not, you're not picking it up. And are become such as have need of milk and not a strong meat. We can't preach hard things to you because you can't even uh, handle the soft things. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he's a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason reasons of use, have their senses exercised to discern, listen, both good and evil. We have churches today and they're ordaining women, which isn't biblical. They're ordaining people that are uh, homosexual, which is sinful. It's abomination to God. The word abomination is the strongest word God uses for something he doesn't like, something sinful. But I'm just saying here, look, to discern both good and evil. If you're saved, if you have the Holy Spirit, you ought to know what's good and you ought to know what's evil. And you ought to be able to tell the difference. And you ought to know what's spiritual and what's not spiritual. Some of the clothing, some of the dress, some of the practice, what we're, what everything we're doing, we ought to know the difference between good and we ought to know the difference between the evil. We have a spiritual purpose, a spiritual purpose. What's the purpose of church? I'm all, listen, I'm all for helping people and the poor and, and social things doing, but our, our purpose is to preach the word of God and keep people out of hell. Jude said, if some have compassion, making a difference, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating the garment spotted by the flesh. When we started this church, our purpose was to see people saved. People that are lost, people don't know Christ, people are on their way to hell. And we want to pull them out of the fire. We want to see their souls saved. Souls saved, lives change. But that is the purpose of a church, a spiritual church. They're, the main thing is keep the main thing the main thing. Mrs. Clark and I have told this story before. We were, we were down on Route 9, down below Ocean City, Memorial down there, and there's an old Methodist church down there. And this may seem goofy, but... I like to walk through the cemeteries and read the old stones. And you could tell that most of those people in that cemetery were godly people. And they had scripture on their stones. And we're out there looking around the cemetery and there's a, there's a guy there cleaning up the lawn or doing something. And he says, would you like to look in that church? I said, sure. We went inside there, just an old fashioned building, old fashioned pews. And uh, he asked me this question. He said, do you do crop walk? I looked at my wife. I said, you know, what's crop walk? And it was some deal they had going to feed people. Now, I'm not against feeding people. God said, remember the poor, and we need to do that. But that isn't the main thing. I asked the guy, are you saved? And he didn't know what he was, I was talking about. Saved from what? What is saved? Now, here's a man. Listen, here's a man who goes to church. He actually is a maintenance man there. He works for the church. He's steady in that church. He don't know what salvation is. 
<laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. There's something wrong with that. We've, we've got churches all over America full of people who don't know anything about being saved. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the main thing. That's the purpose of the church. A paying church, we pay the tithe, we give, we're generous. Let me just say this in Genesis chapter 28. Jacob's running away from home. This is probably my favorite portion of scripture right now. His brother's going to kill him because he's double-crossed his brother. It's the first time he's away from home. He's away from his mom. He's a mama's boy. He gets out there in the middle of nowhere, a place called Luz. You probably know the story. You probably heard me preach it. He lays down. He puts a stone for his pillow. He goes to sleep, and he has a dream. But it's not just a regular dream. It's a God dream. And God appears to him in that place. And God reveals himself to Jacob. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, your grandfather, and the glad God of Isaac, your father. And he's going to be the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And Jacob wakes up from his dream. And he says, how dreadful is this place? Not meaning bad, but how, just how overpowering, how awesome, how fearful is this place? And here's what he says. He said, this is none other but the house of God. A spiritual church, out of everything else, more importantly than anything else, there's going to be the presence of God. You, you ought to be able to sense the presence of God. If, if, this, if God is here, it's Bethel. And if God's not here, it's nothing but lust. And if God's not here, we need to back up and find out where he is and follow him. Let's stand. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you need to get saved because you don't know how long you're going to last. You don't know how long you're going to be around. The Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We were coming home from a wedding last night and there was a bad accident up on the pike. And it was pretty bad. I don't know how bad it was. You can pull out on this pike and get run over. You need to make sure you're going to heaven. You need to know for sure you're going to heaven when you die because you are going to die. And you need to be spiritual. We need to be spiritual. How can I be spiritual? Be filled with the Spirit of God. If you'd like to come and pray, you can. The altar's open. If you'd like to come with your family or pray by yourself, ask God to help our church to be a spiritual church. And we need the Lord. We need the Lord's presence. We need to be able to discern between what is spirit of the world, spirit of the Lord. Pray for wisdom and discernment. If you're a new Christian, you need to grow. You've got to learn. And we hear the word of God, spend time with God. If you're not saved, if you've never put your faith in Christ, Rebecca's here to my right, Brother Jason's to my left. If you need the Lord, if you don't know you're going to heaven, others are already here praying, just slip out from where you are. I know it's a long aisle, but come on down here. If you're a man that needs Jesus, Brother Jason's here, just come to where he is, privately and off to the side. We have offices here. He'll take his Bible and show you from the Bible how you can know that you're going to heaven. If you need the Lord Jesus, why don't you just step out and come right now and let somebody take the Bible and show you how to trust Christ. If you're a lady, come to where Rebecca is. And she'll take her Bible and show you from the Bible how to be saved. Be the greatest decision that you could ever make. It's easy to drift towards the world. It's easy to move away from the Word of God, Spirit of God. We need to be 
built on the Word of God. We sang earlier how firm a foundation. Be spiritual. Spend time with God. Base your life on the Word of God. Father, I pray that you would help us to have a spiritual church. Lord, I pray that it won't just be a building, and I pray it won't just be filled with people, but I pray that most importantly, your spirit would be here and moving in our midst, and the power of God would be here and stirring our hearts. And I pray you'd bless each one of us, bless our families, bless this church family. We need your help. And we pray you give us wisdom and give us discernment. Help us to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I pray for new Christians here that they would grow spiritually. Pray for young people being raised up in our church that they would share our spiritual values. I pray for those who have drifted away that they'd be restored. And God, I pray you'd help us to see new converts and I pray you'd help us to see disciples made. And Lord, I pray to help us to be faithful to the truth of the Word of God. May it be our authority, and may you help us to practice it. We pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. If you're struggling with addictions or stubborn habits, we have a Bible-based program called RU, Reformers Unanimous. Brother Joel Patterson is standing right there in the back of this aisle, and he will be at the Welcome Center right after the service. If you are in need of help or if you know someone in need of help, please speak to Brother Joel, and we'd love to get you the help that you need, and we get that from the Word of God. If you are new to our church or maybe you've been here for a little while you're interested in becoming a member of our church, please go to solidrockinfo.org, solidrockinfo.org, and register for the starting point classes, and we'd love to have you become a member of our church if that's God's will. And starting point classes are the first step in that. If you're a new Christian or new to our church and you think, I'd like to learn more, uh, we have a discipleship program where it's one-on-one, or if you're a married couple, you'd like to have another couple there, and we go through the basics of the Word of God. I sat with someone yesterday, and uh, we were there for about an hour. We are going over the subject of prayer, discipling that person. I met someone in the hallway today and they've been coming for a few months in the church and they spoke to me about wanting to wanting to do discipleship and a a wonderful lady that's new here in our church so if you're wanting to learn these basics of being a christian including some of the things pastor clark's talking about tonight and our need to grow then that would help you out go to solidrockinfo.org solidrockinfo.org and register for the discipleship classes we have our soul winning on Thursday night, 5.30. We meet in the main lobby. I want to encourage everybody to come out for team witnessing, training every available member. And we'd love to have you to come and be faithful. And God will bless you for going out and telling people about Jesus. We do that on Friday. I'm sorry, on Thursday at 5.30. And then Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We meet over in the gymnasium and go out and tell people about the Lord. This coming Thursday... And Friday, we have our Solid Rock Christian School soccer and volleyball tournaments, and we could use help with the concessions. It's a lot of work to feed people for the two days that we're uh, having the, pro- having the uh, tournaments go on. So if you go to solidrockinfo.org, if you'd be willing to take a two-hour slot and go in there and help out, they'll show you what to do. They'll teach you. 
Brother Judd and all the crazies that work in the snack shop. That's how I'm going to call it. And uh, if you'd like to be part of that, lots of energy there. And then also with our soccer tournament, I hope you come cheer on the young people. Wear all your maroon, silver, and white and come out and support the swordsmen. If you text SRCS Sports to 9700, you'll be able to receive updates about the game times. And so that's Thursday and Friday, and it's going to be a great and a wonderful time. Junior activity on Tuesday, October the 29th from 3.15 until 6 p.m., Sky Zone Trampoline Park. Hallelujah. Sign up online, solidrockinfo.org. We've got Leonard for our singles. That's his coming Saturday, lunch and dinner combined at Reading Terminal Market. If you've never been to Reading Terminal, it's an amazing experience. You need to go. Saturday, November the 2nd, and they're going to be meeting at 2.30 at the Speed Line Station in Lindenwald, the train, Lindenwald Patco Line. Meet there at 2.30. Don't miss the train. Sign up online and go over there and get some good food. Be ready to eat, and it'll be wonderful. We've got a wedding here on Saturday, and Josiah Bradbury and Mary Scully are getting married, and that's going to be at 2 o'clock on Saturday, and everyone is invited we hope that you'll come and be part of that. It's going to be a wonderful time. Pray for a great day. And let's be praying for people in our church that have been newly saved. I keep talking about it. Reach out in our church. Be friendly, be friendly, be friendly. The Sunday night crowd, you're the core of the church. And when you see people that you don't know here, reach out and meet them and greet them. And let's talk with people and make friendships and people need that here in the local church. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. It really doesn't matter what the people say. There's something I hope if Jesus doesn't come soon, that our church will go on for a long time being a spiritual church. I'm challenged by hearing preaching and says, hey, listen, we need to be what would please the Lord. And we are the church. It's not this building. It's the people I'm looking at. So let's be the church this week. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Appreciate you being here.